If you could change any choices you have ever made, would you? You can always make another choice and change the course of your success. Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is welcome, the host welcome, of Inspired everyone, Choices Inspired Radio Choices Show, Christine Show. McIver. I am your host, Christine McIver, and tonight we have another fabulous show for you. We are going to be talking all about business. Surprise, surprise. So before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am Christine McIver. I am the host of the Inspired Choices Show here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we are talking tonight all about... Um, we're talking tonight, sorry, we're talking tonight all about thinking big, but acting small. Now, I know many of you probably are like, what is she talking about? What's this all about? Well, it's primarily it's about business, but this can apply to every single solitary area of your life. It does not have to be about business. It can be about anything that's going on for you. So I am a strategic business coach. I am a holographist coach. I work with people in all sorts of areas of their life. Really, my desire is to be able to support other people on the way to their dreams. So who of you out there are desiring greater in your life? Who of you out there wish that you can have even more going on than you already have going on? What is happening for you and what is happening in the world that you wish would be different? It's, it's an interesting time that we have right now. And it's, it's most definitely a time where many of us wish that we could just stop, right? We could stop doing all of the things that we're doing and just have something new come in. And right now I'm having some technical difficulties. How does it get any better than that? <laughs> Isn't it crazy sometimes when you are actually working away in your life and you're working away at your dreams and you get how many of you actually get bumped up against things in your world? How many of you actually desire to have more and yet it doesn't seem to be happening? Do you talk about, do you think about the things that you desire? Do you have them actually going on for you? But then when you want things to happen, it seems like you've got roadblocks. Well, if you're listening to this show live, thank you so much for being here. We here at Inspired Choices Network love to bring amazing content to you. And sometimes when things are going on that doesn't work, well, you know what? You know what we do? We try again. And we try again and we try again. And we keep working at this until we get it right. So I'm really happy you're here tonight. We have a show all about thinking big, but acting small. Thinking big, but acting small is like wishing to win the lottery, but never buying a ticket. You can't win if you don't buy. You just can't. And <laughs> you can't grow if you don't take action. Your big ideas and dreams require you to step up and take the action and you have the ability to do it. You really, really do. But what's stopping you from creating the big life that you desire? Where are you buying the small life when your heart desires so much more? It really is quite a challenge. And thinking big but acting small is, is something that so many of us are doing. And yet... Our desires are still out there. Our wishes and our dreams are still out there so, so big. And what, what I really love is the fact that we keep wishing and we keep desiring and we keep doing the best that we can possibly do. And that's all that anybody can really ask. But you've got to be willing to look at this and you've got to be willing to say, you know what, this is not working for me. This is not working for me that I'm not able to honestly bring my life to me that I desire. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. We're gonna to be talking about what is going on and what, what you want and what maybe is stopping you, what's holding you back from having this life. Because you know what? It 
is possible for you to have your dreams, but you've got to be willing to look at this. And this is something that I've talked about so, so many times is most of us are not willing to actually look at the truth of what is or is not happening in our world. And when you're not willing to do that, well, my friends, guess what's going to happen? You're going to stop the train from moving forward with your desires, with your dreams. And why should you miss out on anything? Why should anyone, what makes you different that you don't get to have your dreams? What makes you different that you don't get to have your desires actualized? Nothing. There is nothing less about you. You didn't come into this world to have a less than life, to have a less than relationship, to have a less than business, to have a less than anything. And yet many of us have bought into, are you ready for this? Many of us have bought into the lie of being a victim in our own lives and being a victim to the circumstances around us. And you know what? you've got to be willing to look at this and you've got to be willing to change it. And you've got to be willing to admit to yourself where you're not stepping up. You've got to be willing to admit where you are giving up. How many of you out there right now know that you have given up, that you've played the victim, that you've said, you know what, I can't do this. If I can't do this, then you know what, what's, what's the sense? What's the sense anymore to try? Because I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. You know what? Try again. Try again. It's time. It's time for you to really lean into this and to know that, you know what? It's not meant to be easy. You're meant to have ease. And if you're here tonight and you're willing to actually look at this and you're willing to actually ask for even more and you're willing to look at where you're stopping yourself, this is where you will create the ease of your desires. So this may not be an easy show to hear. Um, You know, I'm going to be kicking some butt and I am going to be seriously pulling on you to wake the blank up. I don't mean to be cruel. I don't mean to be unkind. And I don't mean to be rough on anyone. Absolutely not. But you know what? Sometimes we need a wake up call. We need a great big wake up call. And this tonight is your wake up call to your dreams. Do you hear your dreams calling you? Do you hear do you wake up imagining your, the life that you desire? Or do you go into the poor me? Like, oh, I can't get it. You know, it's not happening. It's, you know, oh, everything I try, it's not working. You know what? Uh-uh, enough of that bullshit. Enough with that. You know why? Because that is like a snowball going down a hill. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And every single one of us knows what that's like. You can't stop that snowball, but I'm telling you right now that you have the choice to try something different. You have the choice to create that life and you have the choice in your reality to have what you desire. And what I really want you to know is my friends, it's not as difficult as you may think. It's not as difficult as you may think. You know, you can never have a happy ending on the way to your life if the journey was unhappy. You can't have a happy ending if all along the way you've been complaining, you've been moaning, you've been playing the victim. You can't have that. You have to take responsibility right here, right now. And when you say, I desire something, you've got to be willing to do what it takes to get there. You really have to hold yourself accountable. One of the biggest things that I absolutely know within um, especially entrepreneurs' lives is many, many, many entrepreneurs, what they're doing is they're not holding themselves accountable, number one. They are saying what they want, but they're not actually following through in so many cases. And you know how I know that? Because look at the statistics of businesses not succeeding. 
I'm probably going to go against a lot of people. <laughs> I'm probably going to go against a lot of people actually hearing what I have to say tonight. But I'm telling you that you have what it takes, but you're not holding yourself accountable. And you absolutely can change anything that's been going on. Many, many entrepreneurs that failed, they kept falling back into the poor me's day in and day out. They were not listening. They were not doing what was required. And what I'm telling you is it's critical. It is absolutely critical that you do what's required each and every day, each and every day. And that's the space. It's like what I have found is so, so many people they are waiting for the big day to happen. They're waiting for the big event to happen. So they finally step up and own it. And I'm telling you, it's never going to happen if along your journey, you're not actually doing what's required. You have to be doing it each and every day. Now, there are some days that you are going to be tired. There are some days that you're going to need to take a break and regroup, refresh, excellent. Please do that. But at the end of that day, step back into your life, own your life and own your dreams. You're the only one, my friends, you are the absolutely the only ones who can change how this journey ends. And what if it's easier than you actually imagined? What if you could make a different choice today that would change all of it. The way you're feeling along the way is the way you're continuing to pre-pave your journey. I want you to think about that. The way that you feel right now, let's say you were in a really bad mood. The way you're feeling right now, I want you to imagine that you just paved out the next several days in your life because that energy, the where you are right now, is you are sending that energy out to all the molecules in the world, in the universe. You're sending the, those molecules out and you're saying, you essentially are saying, I would like more of this. Whatever you're being and doing, you are actually saying, I would like more of this. Now, I know if I spoke to you, you would not say that. I know if I actually said to you, listen, what do you really, really desire? And you got very excited. I know for sure that you would start to tell me the amazing things that you desire. And then, and this has happened so many times with clients. And then I say, so what's holding you back? And poof, boom, just falls right down. That energy drops. There comes that victim energy again. My friends, I'm going to repeat this. The way you're feeling along the way, along the way in each and every day, is the way you're continuing to pre-pave your journey. You know, we are, uh, this show is being broadcast on August 25th, 2021. And right now we're still in some very challenging times with the pandemic. We're in a lot of political challenges. There's just a great deal going on. And a few weeks ago, I heard myself saying a number of times, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. How are you, Christine? How are things going on? I'm exhausted. And it was really interesting because I was like, all of a sudden, I'm like, what are you saying? What? You're repeating that a lot. And this is something I'm grateful for because I've learned to listen to myself in the moment. And right away, I was like, hold on a second here. What are you doing? You are creating more things to be exhausted. Now, I am not trying to say that there's not a great deal out there that absolutely can add to our frustrations, to our worry, to our exhaustion. I'm not saying that's not out there, but you have to manage that data. You have to manage that information. 
You have to pay attention to what is coming out of your mouth and the thoughts that are in your head repeatedly, because whether you stop saying those words or you stop thinking them, they are still around you energetically, my friends. So what are you doing? What can you do right now? What can you do right now to stop that from happening? What can you do in your life? What can you do in your world to ensure that you have better thoughts, that you have better things going on, that you are creating what you desire? So one of the first things you want to do is detach. Detach from everyone's emotions out there. All right? Detach. Yes, Karen says, autopilot thoughts so harmful they are and you know what you're welcome for the reminder Karen and thank you thank you everyone for being here because collectively as we pay attention to this together we can help to have each other's back and remind each other right who is your tribe who are the people around you that <laughs> that have the courage to say to you Christine do you realize what you're saying Christine can you maybe think about saying it a different way? How is that creating your life? Now, make a pact with someone. Hey, I'd like you to have my back and I'd like you to call me when you hear me saying these things because I've noticed recently that I'm creating some funk in my world. So there must be something that I'm choosing. There's something, must be something I'm thinking about that is creating this, okay? That's the first thing I want you to think about is who is your tribe? Who is around you? Who do you have in your world that you can actually make an agreement, right? Do you have a coach? Do you have someone that you're working with that can call you out on your stuff? Because you know what? The individual person has an incredibly difficult time holding themselves accountable. And somebody that is not um, your loved ones or your family members you know, someone that's very, very close to you, they don't have an invested interest in you um, not getting angry at them. As a coach, I say this to my clients all the time. I don't have a vested interest in them being angry at me or not. In fact, I say to them up front, when we start our coaching relationship, there's going to be times that you're going to be mad at me. <laughs> and they're like, okay, that's my job. My job is to be truthful and honest and bring it out up front. And that's what I'm going to do with each and every one of you here tonight. So my friends, we're up for our first commercial break. You are listening to myself, Christy McIver here on the Inspired Choices show here on the Inspired Choices Network. And we are talking about thinking big, but acting small. I have a lot more planned for you. Stick around my friends and we'll be right back. All right. See you after the break. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Inspired Choices Show with Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. 
You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. All right, my friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us, I would really love for you to go back and listen to the first segment of this show because we really need for each and every one of us to be on the same page. Tonight's show is called Thinking Big But Acting Small. We were talking about do you hear your dreams calling or do you just go into the poor me? Enough of that. It's time to step up. Nobody nobody is going to deliver you your dreams. Now, somebody might be very generous and kind. People might take care of you financially. People might bring you beautiful things. People might even be, you know, at your beck and call. But if you are someone that's listening to this show, I know you have something on your heart that you desire to put out into the world. And this is critical. This is absolutely critical because if you're not... If you are not fulfilling the desires of your heart, this is where you end up at the end of this journey, sad, with some regret. How many of you have regret in your world? As I was saying at the first segment, you can't have a happy ending if you've been complaining on the whole way of your journey you have to take responsibility and you've got to be responsible enough to call yourself out. How many of you are are willing to say, okay, if so far, if I've not had my dream, I am willing to call myself out. I am willing to have somebody call me out on my stuff. You know, I did a show uh, a while ago, go check out, I can't remember what date it was, but really I was talking so, so much about how your joy is up to your self-development. So many people, let's, let's talk about, say, relationships. Yeah, we got hands up in the chat room. Let's talk about relationships. If you are someone who's complained that, oh, you, all the people that you meet, you've been in relationship with, they drive you crazy, or they don't make you happy, or you always seem to meet this type of person, or you work with this type of person. You know what? Who's the common denominator in this? You are. Now, I am not saying that you are doing something quote unquote wrong. But what I am saying is you've got to be willing to look at this. So for instance, I can remember when um, I worked at this one job, I was just out of high school and I worked with the office bitch. I'm just going to say it. She was the office bitch. And, um, and it was interesting because I remember us all talking about her and, and she was just an unhappy person. (laughs) She just really, really was an unhappy person. And a few years later, I got a different job. And where I was working, this woman, there was another woman in my department, and she was a bitch. And I, I started to look back at the places that where I worked. And I was like, why do I always end up working with the bitch? What is it that I always get the bitch? Now, I can tell you when that first dropped into my mind, I was definitely in victim energy. Anybody, anybody, can you see yourself doing that? Yeah, I was. I'm willing to admit that. And then a few years later, the thought came back up in my mind. (laughs) Oh, my God, that's so funny, Karen. Karen says, so hard to hide when you are consistently the common denominator. Exactly. Exactly. So a year, few years later, this thought came into my mind. I, I don't know who I was talking to or what, whatever the reason that came up. And I thought to myself, hold on a second here, MacIver. <laughs> now, when I'm calling myself out, I call myself by my last name. I said, okay, hold on a second here, MacIver. What's your part in this? What part do you own in this? And I had to look at this. And I had to be honest and upfront with myself. And do you know, my friends, do you know what I discovered? That one, (laughs) I was willing to be confrontational with people. I was willing to be like, oh, you can't be like that. You have to do this. You can't treat people like that. I was willing to step up and kind of be the leader when people wanted to complain. 
So then I thought, huh, okay, so what's that creating for me? And you know what it was creating for me? More opportunities to be the leader of complaining. Now, there is a difference between complaining and taking action again, right? If someone was doing something illegal or immoral or something that was hurting someone, I would not have a problem taking that information to the authorities. No longer complaining though, no longer really unloading hugely. Now that's another thing. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about um, women. Oftentimes we need to get things out of us. I'm definitely one of these people that when there's something bothering me and it's within me, I need to get it out. Okay. It's kind of like a lot of women, we need to unload all of it in order to be clear. So a lot of times when a woman speaks to a man, a man wants to fix it and a woman doesn't want it fixed. She just wants to talk about it. There is unloading it. And then there is giving it life again. So what are you saying when you need to unload something? Are you actually giving it more life by talking about it with several, several people, right? Are you talking with several people about your dreams or about your problems? Tell me about that. Tell me where you are putting your focus. You know, your past thoughts or choices no longer matter. They no longer matter because unless you are talking about them again and again, there is no energy. There's no matter with them. All right. But you, my friend, every time you go to open your mouth and say something, you make them matter again. What are you saying? What are you doing? Right. It doesn't matter what thoughts brought you to this moment. It does not matter where you have been on your journey. We could talk about so many amazing people in the world that we know that they turn their lives around. Well, you know what? That opportunity is for you as well to turn your life around, to head in the direction of your dreams is available to you every single day. There is something that I often say about other people that I say about myself now too, to myself. I often say when people are being jerks, I'll say that person needs a little checkup from the neck up. How many of us actually need a little checkup from the neck up? We need to be putting different thoughts in our head to create different outcomes. We have to be willing be willing to first and foremost, call ourselves out on this. That is step number one. Be willing to call yourself out on the thoughts and the words that you are doing each and every day. That's one. The second thing is make your dream even bigger. Have posters around your office in your house. Talk about it. Have, have, you know, get with a tribe. Have cheerleaders in your life where you're each sharing your dreams and you keep cheering each other on. Everybody needs that energy. It's difficult to do it alone. We need cheerleaders. We need people that believe in us and people that we believe in to support each other, to really keep moving forward. That's key. It's so, so, so important. Sometimes when the world is spinning so fast and our dreams seem to turn really, really pale, right? We have to go back. We have to rest for a minute and dwell upon the fact that everything is part of a bigger dream that we have. We have to be willing to do this. I am telling you, even if you took 10 minutes a day and you gave yourself a little checkup from the neck up and you asked yourself, okay, what are the things that I've been saying today? What are the things that I've been focusing on? Where have I been putting my energy? What matters to me today? I'm not talking about your long list of to-dos. I'm not talking about the things that you have to get done or the things you have to fix. Of course, that's part of creating your dreams. But I'm talking about first and foremost, where are your thoughts and where are your words? This is very, very important 
This is something that I have had to do and I do on a daily basis. You know, I was talking to with a girlfriend today and today was such a frustrating day for my, for me, my friends. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but I swear to you, I thought I said to my girlfriend, I'm like, is the world off its axis? Because it felt to me like everybody was crazy. Everywhere I turned, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. And then I went, okay, enough, enough, it's done. Choose again. So I went and I had a nap. A nap is really a great thing to do. Even if it's only 10 minutes, you closing your eyes. And when I had the nap so that my brain was quiet, I put on some beautiful music to distract my mind while I kind of cleaned out the coffers. And then I chose again. And you know what? It would have been so, so easy for me to say, ah, I'm not doing tonight's show. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it next week. And then I went, no, this is your dream. This is part of your dream. You cannot give up on your dream. You have to keep choosing. Now, if I was really sick or something, yes, of course, I would honor my body. But it wasn't about my body, was it? It was about my thoughts and where I was putting my focus. Are you willing to look at your thoughts? Are you willing to look at where you truly are focusing? And are you ready to give up being the victim in your world? Being a victim is so easy and you have no idea how many times we're in it. I'm telling you, now that this is heightened in my world and I listen for myself, I can hear it with other people over and over and over again. It is so prevalent in everybody's life that unless they are doing personal development work or they've got somebody holding them accountable, most people don't even realize how much they are in the victim role. Um, someone in the chat room says, I do talk too much about family stuff. Wow. So holding this energy in place, doing this time to shift the focus and dream more about my business and a life I love to live. Oh, and Karen says, you are brilliant, Christine. And I love your determination to create more and more. Yes. And you know what? And thank you, Karen, for saying that. If I'm not the one who's going to do it. Nobody's going to do it for me. And you know what? If they did it for me, it wouldn't be as enjoyable. It just wouldn't. I'm not saying do everything alone. I'm not saying being a lone ranger. But my gosh, my friends, you've got to be the leader of your life. And you've got to be the leader of your dreams. All right, we got a lot more planned for you. Oh my gosh, this show is going so fast. Please stick around. We're going to go for another short break. And when we get back, we're going to dive more into exactly what's required for you to think big and to act big. Stick around, my friends. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show. 
with coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, my gosh. I'm so grateful that you are here. You know, the energy that together we can create makes doing what I do just so delicious. What do you do that if you actually created a community would make what you do even more delicious? You know, that's one of the best things about having my show here on Inspired Choices Network. I've had my show now since 2011. I'm actually in my 11th year of having my own show. And in the last year, we actually added TV as well. And to be able to create, you know, one of the biggest things that it does for me, and I know for so, so many hosts here on the network, is it makes me be accountable. I'm not only accountable to you, the listener, I'm also accountable to my show, my show, and I'm also accountable to my network. You know, when you are accountable, you show up and sometimes we need a kick in the butt. So what are you holding yourself accountable to, right? Do you have people that maybe book appointments with you or people that want to connect with you, whether they are personal or professional, and you keep coming up with excuses and you keep putting things in your way in order to stop you from having that opportunity with them, right? There is so many of us that do this and we block ourselves. We are the, our own blockers. We make excuses. We keep buying into our own lies that, oh, now's not the right time or, or you know, it'd be so much better if and all this crap. Stop it. Stop it. You are stopping your own self from growing. You know, if you did say yes to that client, if you did say yes to connecting with, with a friend or going out and meeting someone or even have a, a virtual coffee with somebody, there is the energy. When you have your desires out there, okay, your desires are being, there. there is this universal um, <laughs> I just saw a cake being made. There's this universal baking process that's going on with your desires. And when you put those desires out there, the universe is conspiring to bring you what you desire. As long as you keep your energy, your words and your thoughts on that same path, staying out of the victim energy, when the opportunities come along and you say, yes, there's going to be something in it for you. You never, ever know what's going to be created. You never know what's on the other side of that door until you open that door. So you have a virtual coffee with someone. You say yes to an opportunity. You open your doors up for another client to join you. You, you look into the possibility of using a different social media platform. You, you educate yourself more. You hire someone to work with you and support you to grow. You know what? If it doesn't work out, you can make another choice. You're not locked in, but I'm telling you that whenever you're making a choice in your life, in your relationships, in your business, you're going to learn something new. But if you sit there and you keep waiting and you keep complaining, those opportunities are going to pass you by. You literally have the door to opportunities shut it's shut, it's bolted, like it's, you know, it's covered over. You are stopping the possibilities from coming when you're not willing to say yes. I want to give you a challenge. I want to give you a challenge for the next month. All right. Somebody said this to me. Oh my gosh. It was actually Holly Hall. 
And Holly Hall used to own A to Zen.fm. And that was a network that I was on. And that's where I first started producing. And she gave me that opportunity. She was one of the people that was baking, part of the baking of my dreams. And she said to me, Holly was a psychic. And she said to me, Christine, a lot of opportunity, you're going to pass by a lot of opportunities. And I'm like, what? (laughs) And I can remember, I didn't say it to her, but I can remember saying in my mind, screw that I am. I am not passing by any opportunities. She gave me the wedgie that was required for me to say yes, more and more and more. And when she, yeah, she was a little, I was being a devil, but that was one of the best things for me. And so what was really cool was a a number of months later, she actually gave me the opportunity and she asked me, have you ever thought about producing? Now my brain, where I fed all of the, this is the way it should be. And this is the way it should show up. And this is who I am. And this is what that means. And blah, 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 blah. All that garbage that keeps playing on repeat, tried to jump in when she asked me that question. And I just went, stop, ask a question. And I said to her, I haven't, what would that look like? I asked another question and she started to explain it to me. And so I thought, well, hmm, maybe that would be another revenue stream for me to add to my business, right? I was actually at a place where I basically had blown up my business and I was on the verge of of going bankrupt. I truly, truly was. And so, you know, call it kismet, call it whatever you want. But this was a great opportunity for me to actually practice asking more questions. And so I chose it. And I thought, I don't know anything about this. And I truly didn't know. I mean, I know how to talk. That's obvious. But I didn't know anything about producing. I didn't know anything about these different programs. And she was generous and taught me. And then I started teaching myself more and more. And lo and behold, here I am. This is a major part of my business. And I didn't know it. But it's a major part of my dream. It was one of the ingredients I didn't know would add to my dream. So what possibilities are you closing out because you keep yourself on repeat of the old thoughts and the old choices? (laughs) Thanks, Karen. Karen says, yes, you can talk. (laughs) Well, it's a good thing, right? So what I want, what I really want to get to tonight, and you know, we've we've only got a few minutes left. We're actually going to skip our last break because I want to make sure that I get this all in with you. What I really want to get to is about some of the things that you're buying into that aren't true. So a lot of the times we're going to be telling ourselves, "Well, I failed. I failed. You didn't fail. You had a setback." You made a choice that didn't work. That doesn't mean it's the end of the line. Maybe it's the end of that choice. I've told this story again. (laughs) Sorry, I told this story in the past. I'm going to tell it again. Um, My very first radio show that I ever did, um, which was, I think it was like March of 2011. Can't remember the dates, but I remember. being so excited about that opportunity. My whole body was telling me, yes, 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 do this, do this, do this. And it was doing that by the level of excitement. Well, when it came that, to that day, I was still very excited, but I started to get nervous, which, you know, you do anything new. Yeah, you're nervous. Well, right before, about five minutes before, I went into a panic attack. That's the only way I can describe this. I went into a panic attack. And <laughs> The great thing about me is I'm more worried about embarrassing myself on not following through on something that I said I was going to do than worrying about myself having a panic attack. So that actually has served me a number of times. Now, I very rarely have, like, I think maybe I've had two panic attacks in my life, kind of over extreme fear. And anyways, I went ahead and I did the show. And the first segment of the show I cried through the entire first segment of the show. I was overwhelmed. I was so grateful because I I could feel, I didn't maybe cognitively know it, but I could feel that I was on the path 
of my dreams. And I could feel that I was literally stepping up. I was upping, I was up leveling my game. And I cried through that first segment. I was a mess. I was an absolute mess. Thank God there wasn't, it wasn't videotaped at the time, but I cried and I cried and I was so grateful and excited and overwhelmed. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I was so glad that I was doing what I was doing, even though I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, a lot of people might have ended that show right there, or they might have said at the end of that first show, I'm done. I'm never, ever putting myself through that again. And while it took me <laughs> a, a little while to kind of recover from that show, I didn't let that stop me. I didn't let that stop me. I allowed myself to see it as the first step, not the final step. So what choice have you made where you've decided that you've failed instead of seeing it was not something that was permanent. It was something that you made a choice and you get to choose again. This is critical for you to get this because if you're looking to grow yourself and you're looking to expand, you've got to understand you're not going to get it right out of the gate. There's going to be more things for you to learn and grow. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to make yourself so vulnerable for your dreams? What are you willing to do for your dreams? Do you have limitations on what you're willing to do for your dreams? Because every limitation that you have is probably going to create a lot more limitation in the actual outcome of your dreams. A lot, lot more. And this is so important for you to get, my friends, because when you are limiting your dreams and you are saying that, you know what, I'm willing to do this, this, and this, but I'm not willing to do that. Well, right away, you just closed off a major possibility. What if you were willing to do whatever it took and along the way you would honor yourself, you would honor your dreams, and you would honor your values? You don't have to say, no, I'm not willing to do this, this, or this. Check with it. Check in with it each and every time. Look at that and be willing to say, you know what? I am worth and my dreams are worth the extra effort. I am willing to step up. Because if that dream is in your heart, I want you to know it is 1 billion percent possible for it to come forward. Nothing that you can imagine is impossible. Nothing. Nothing is laid on your heart. Nothing is laid in your mind. Nothing is laid in your dreams if it's not possible. But where you are when you imagine this dream and where the dream actualizes, what's between there is your choices. So what choices are you making that are moving you forward or actually taking you completely off that path? What are they? This is what I want you to look at. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, it's it's lonely at the top. I, I don't want to, you know, really put myself out there and really be a lot. And that's one of the, the show that I think that I'm going to be talking about la next week is really about um, rejoicing and cheerleading. And uh, I don't want to kind of give it away yet, but it's going to be a lot about being at the top and what we buy into and what other people choose when we are actually moving towards our dreams. It's a big, big topic, and it's something that's really important to pay attention to. But I want you to know that the more that you choose greater in your life, the energy that you be, you are going to attract other people that are on that same path. They are going to cheer you on. And you can, in, in, in reflection, cheer them on as well, whether you know them or not. How many people do you rejoice for when they are following their dream? Do you even rejoice for yourself or are you playing modest? For God's sake, stop that. Please stop being modest about what you are succeeding at. Stop it because that bullshit, that bullshit is a way to keep you down. And there's, listen, society, 
the patriarch, <laughs> religion, all sort. Don't be boastful. You know, don't show off. Don't you know brag? Bullshit. Bullshit. That stuff that you desire in your heart and those choices that you're making that are bringing you there, they desire that energy. They actually are the fuel to keep you moving and something that will actually create greater and greater. Brag, get that, get that tribe around you that's your cheerleader. I have cheerleaders in my life. I'm so incredibly grateful for them because they, they don't even know this, that sometimes when I'm like, no, I'm not going to do this. So that's stupid. I can hear them. I can hear them. Come on, you can do this. I can hear them praising me. Do you have those people in your life? And are you that for other people? I'm telling you, my friends, no matter what is going on in the world, we can make a difference in our lives and we can bring our dreams to fruition. And if you're somebody that's listening to the show, I'm going to guess that you have some pretty big dreams around how to create greater in this world for everyone. But if you don't keep moving towards your dreams, if you're not willing to do what's required, if you're not willing to hold yourself accountable to your thoughts, to your words, to your actions, to where you're focusing, to how much energy you're putting into this, how much energy you're putting into that, if you're not willing to do that, you're not going to get to those dreams. And you are absolutely not going to create the, the change in the world that is on your heart. I have huge desires on my heart to contribute to the world. You know, one of my greatest dreams is to honestly make create a very, very prosperous company so that I can take money and I can make a difference in people's lives. I desire to see other entrepreneurs be an incredibly prosperous as well, financially prosperous, because I know that we live on a planet that requires money. And like a new friend said to me, no one should ever apologize for the desire to have money especially when what they want to do is to contribute to the world around them. There are so many people out there that require support and that absolutely could use your love and your kindness and your generosity. And that takes money. It does. It takes money. And there's so much money in the world. It's not even funny. But if you keep buying into the victim and you're not willing to do what's required and you're not taking those actions, you're not going to create, generate, attract the opportunities, attract the financial opportunities to be able to contribute to those in the world. You came here to make a difference. Step up enough with playing small. Hold yourself accountable. This isn't a trial run. It certainly isn't. Honestly, I want you to ask yourself this question. What if today was my last day? What if this week was my last week? Am I satisfied with what I've created? Am I satisfied with where I am in my life, with my dreams? Am I satisfied? No, I'm not satisfied. There's more. There's a lot more. And I want you to understand that you can have it all. You've got to be willing to choose. And you've got to be willing to be honest with yourself. Turn it up. Hold yourself accountable. You know, yes, you're tired. I get it. Yes, there's a lot of people complaining. Yes, it's crazy. So what? So what? <laughs> As I'm reminded often, you know what? You can sleep when you're dead. <laughs> My mom used to say that. I have friends that say that. Yeah, you can. You can sleep when you're dead. I'm not saying push your body to the point that it needs you know, hospitalization, but come on. Come on. You and I both know that you could be taking an extra hour a day you could be taking an extra five hours a week and adding energy to your dreams more than you ever have before. Are you going to do it? Are you going to step up and really not just think big, not just dream big, but take action? If you don't know what action to take, call me, <laughs> email me, connect with me. 
That's what I do. I'm a strategic business coach and I can do that personally for you or for your business. Oh my gosh, this show's over. How did that happen? Oh my God, my friends, I can't wait to see you here next week. Please come back. And I want you to remember, no matter what you choose, you can always make another choice. Bye for now. Thank you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, be willing to choose what you really desire. This is your life, making the choices that bring you all that you desire.